She's actually dead to the world. That wasn't supposed to be a pun, by the way. So, good girls, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a brand new People's Diary episode. So, today's is a little bit different. Instead of getting the confessions from you guys, because it would kind of creep me out if they were from you guys, we are going to be doing Reddit deathbed confessions. I am obsessed with these. I feel like so many murderers come to surface. So many family secrets, you know, I, f I find it all so interesting. So, in this video, if I say the R word, that is obviously referring to the word on the screen. I personally don't like saying it, guys. It's just not my favorite word and it obviously is a very sensitive topic so as i said if you are uncomfortable with any of those topics feel free to click off i will definitely see you in another video if you ever do want to leave a confession you want to confess your sins to me then absolutely click the link in the description also if you have any dilemmas you can leave them down below on the same link but make sure you click the tub talks and that is where i basically just be your agony on obviously because of today's topic do have to give you guys a little bit of a warning we're going to be talking about some serious topics obviously we're going to be talking about death we're going to be talking about murder we're going to be talking about sexual assault there are so many so many topics to cover in this realm i am just so shocked especially the first confession absolutely blew my mind so let's just get straight on into it in Norway in 2005, a man asked his nurses to invite the police over into his room. And then he confessed to R-wording and killing two girls almost 30 years earlier. Not only that, but another man had already been convicted of both crimes and had wrongfully spent 18 years in prison. This blows my mind. 18 years in prison. This also gets so much worse because I feel so sorry for this guy. So there wasn't really much context on this Reddit post, but I did do my research. And it is true. The man who was wrongfully convicted... I may pronounce this wrong because it is a Norwegian name. He's called Fritz Moen. But Moen was deaf and he had a really severe speech impediment. He was also partially paralyzed, but he did have a good understanding. He had a normal intelligence and he had a really good memory as well. So I feel as though if he could have communicated better to people, he probably wouldn't have been wrongfully convicted. So that really isn't his fault at all. The main reason he was arrested was due to a confession. And this has been highly, highly speculated that it was coercion, which with everything he had going on completely makes sense which happens so often and they can they do just get away with it God, there were biological samples but of course guys they were destroyed would you fucking believe and that is another reason why they in court could convince the judge to prove him guilty pretty much even though he wasn't the person who actually did it i have no idea how to pronounce this name i'm just gonna put it on the screen because i'm not even gonna butcher it but he was a convicted criminal he had such a long history of violence anyway and that is who on their deathbed confessed to the murder I just feel so bad for Fritz, man. Toy, you're a prick. Even more than a prick. <laughs> My dad had Alzheimer's and ended up in a secure ward. He was blind and almost deaf and I was visiting one day. He didn't know who I was, but he started talking about me. He said I had done better than him in life and he was so proud of me. In real life, he was a quiet man and he never really told me when I was growing up. But looking back, he did so many things that my dumbass never realised were for me. This one is so cute. For example, when he retired, his colleagues asked what he would like for a present. He chose a scientific calculator, and this was back in the 1970s. He had absolutely no use for it, but he gave it me for my birthday. I thought he was just passing it on, not realising that he'd asked for it with me in mind. Oh, isn't that just like such a punch to the gut? At the same time, it warms my heart. Like it's so sad, but it's so sweet. Bittersweet. That is exactly the word I was looking for. Oh, your dad is an angel. My dad was adopted from a woman who went to my grandparents' church and got pregnant out of wedlock. My grandpa then, on his deathbed, confessed that he had actually had an affair with that woman and that he was my dad's real father, which was why he suggested adopting him in the first place. Does your grandma know? Was your grandma in on this? Oh my god. Very religious family, I can tell. That is absolutely mental. Imagine finding out your adopted parent was actually your real parent the whole time. Oh my god, your whole life is a lie. <laughs> Swiftly moving on, my grandfather admitted to me that he once accidentally had sex with a man. Probably wasn't accidentally. <laughs> As my mother lay in her hospice bed dying of cancer, she beckoned me to come closer and said, I've hid the money. I've hid the money in the... And she was having trouble speaking and getting her breath and her voice was cracking. She tried one last time. The money is in the... 
She closed her eyes and her breath stopped and her head slumped to one side. A few seconds later, she burst out laughing and she was pranking me. Sadly, she died three days later. Do you know what? I absolutely love that sense of humour. I feel like it just really does lift the mood. It's such a dwelling feeling, like having somebody in hospital who you know isn't going to last much longer. It is just the saddest feeling in the world. So the fact that your mum, even in those moments, still wanted to bring a smile to your face and she was just being selfless. She was just trying to make you laugh. is so, so sweet. Oh my God, I love that story. So this is a quote that somebody put on Reddit. It says, I may not be your real grandfather. I kidnapped your mom when she was little. This person put that was a heck of a punch in the gut for sure. So your grandfather was a child kidnapper, right? So he committed a crime. Very clearly a very disgusting man. Is that right to say? Can I say that? No, he is, right? Why does he say I may not be your real grandfather? Because he isn't. He kidnapped your mom. Ciao. <laughs> I had a hospice patient who asked everybody, is it December 13th yet? Since mid-November she had been asking this and we'd hear this question multiple times every single day and we just assumed it was a family member's birthday or something. And then December 13th finally rolls around and that is the day she died. Do you know, this, this stuff makes me believe in afterlife, reincarnation, everything like that, because how did she know the day she was gonna die? And why was that so special to her? Like, was somebody speaking to her, telling her that that is the day she's gonna die? Did she have a visit from somebody who told her that was the day she was gonna die? Like, you know when people say, oh, if you could read a book on your life, including your death, would you read it? It's an interesting question. I don't know if I would. I'm a very, like, live in the moment kind of person, don't really like to expect things just go with the flow i don't think i'd want to know my whole life i had a client who was a 90 year old male confess to his wife and children that while he was away on business he had obtained another family he then lived another two years fuck oh fuck Jeez. that is the one age you do not want to piss people off you know because they might do something <laughs> it might turn off your life support or some shit my grandpa, who is a Sicilian man with blessed cooking skills, told us on his deathbed that his famous meatballs were actually just frozen meatballs from the grocery store. <laughs> I met a lady on the train to Edinburgh who was really nervous because she was on the way to meet her brother for the very first time in 70 years. Oh my god. Her parents had told her that he died when he was one, but they'd actually given him away because they couldn't afford to have as many kids. She didn't find this out until her mother confessed it on her deathbed. Imagine getting to 70 years old and you discover that you have a sibling. All the memories you've missed out on. Do you know what? See the positive? You know now. Oh my god, everything that you could tell each other. I'm so happy that he's still alive. <laughs> A friend of my mother's was R-worded by her stepfather when she was 12 and despite telling her mother and being open about what happened, this was nearly 30 years ago by the way, nothing was ever done about it and he went on to have even more children with her mother and basically he got away with it. The people that could have helped her never believed her and he never took any blame at all. Until on his deathbed last year, surrounded by family, he finally admitted what he had done to her all those years ago. And instead of dying, the f started to get better and now he has to live the rest of his hopefully short life with everyone knowing that he's a child rapist. Do you know what? That is the Lord's work, that last part of the story. I'm not even religious. But I'd like to think if there is a God up there, he had a hand in something to do with that. I'm just kind of glad that he's still alive though, so he can actually deal with the repercussions of his actions. What a fucking piece of shit. My mum is from China, though we are now happily residing in a European country. We went back to China for my grandmother's last few weeks as she was dying from terminal cancer. On my grandma's last days, she requested that my mum would stay with her alone. And it was only then that she revealed to my mum that she wasn't her biological mother. Oh my god. My grandma confessed that she brought my mum from a child trafficking ring, which was very common in China back then, because she had tried for so many years to conceive, but she still couldn't get pregnant. My mother cried a lot, not only for the unimaginable pain that her biological parents likely went through, losing a baby, but also the fact that my grandparents have gone above and beyond to treat my mum as their little girl. They literally did treat my mum as their own. They were never abusive and only gave her the very best in life. They even willingly sent my mum to the US for university education, even though they aren't rich by any means. I have such mixed feelings about this because I don't really know if I can comment on this. I'm obviously so glad that she had a really good upbringing, but Jesus Christ, a trafficking ring? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. You could have gone for adoption. That probably would have been so much better. <laughs> I have a great aunt that passed away when I was 17 and just before she did, my older brother confessed to her that I was gay. Okay, not his place. She called me in and explained how our family have been through so much and that she was willing to totally accept me for who I am. Oh, that's sweet. I think that it's absolutely great for her to be that open-minded. There's only one problem though. I'm not gay. <laughs> She never believed me because my brother had apparently confessed it to her. What was he doing? Was he just filming the whole thing? Like, what kind of sick practical joke is that? Imagine if she was so homophobic. I mean, that is enough to make you pop your clogs, no? 
My great grandma was near death and I was in the room with her alone. She told me that I needed to marry for love and never because of convenience. And she told me that she loved her first husband and how great of a man he was. Aww. He was definitely the love of her life. He died young in a mill accident. She then told me that she married her second husband, my great grandpa, only because she was a single mom with four children and he had helped them a lot after her husband's death. She didn't really love him, but he promised to provide for them. He ended up being a horrible man and sexually assaulted her older daughters. He was killed in a logging accident on the property. Okay. She watched it happen and never ran to help him. She did go inside and call the police though. She told me, I didn't care if that son of a bitch died. That's why I didn't run inside or go and check on him. I was happy that he did. Yeah, my great grandma was brutal, but he did horrible things to her children. So yeah, she just let him die. I mean, I can't see him by. That would be me. <laughs> my grandma confessed to murder on her deathbed. Usually you'd think it was pain relief, but she was an eccentric and it was actually believable. We trust all of her ex-husbands, all of her partners and any other likely candidates. Unfortunately, no one was missing or died. Oh, an untimely death. Good. But sometimes I do wonder. I mean, it's a bit of a fucked up thing to confess, no? Like, I'd probably do the whole, oh, I've hidden some money somewhere, you know, just to keep people on their toes and joke about, but I wouldn't... Are you okay, babes? By the way, this is my brother's dog. This is Mabel, guys. But I, I wouldn't confess to murder just for the crack, you know? Imagine if you lived like that other guy. My grandfather had pretty terrible dementia and he kept making deathbed confessions as he knew he didn't have much time left. Oh God, where's this going? They were often about witnessing a murder and not telling anyone, but each time he confessed to us, the details changed. It happened a couple of times a day over the course of his final week and we finally figured out that he would watch the local news and hear about these things happening and then he would think he actually witnessed them. Why is that so innocent? That is so sweet. Also sad for him that he thought he was witnessing those. <laughs> I didn't see it, but my aunt watched her elderly mother fall down the stairs and confessed just before she died that she wasn't her biological mother. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of these. She told my aunt that her oldest sister was actually her mother. The sister had gotten pregnant too young and the mum said it was hers. A common way of handling it back then. She revealed it in her very last breath. I'm just trying to put that into perspective. Like, that would be like me giving birth to my little sister and my mum raising her as my sister the fuck oh my god i hate that i hate that so much Ew. <laughs> my great uncle actually confessed to having two illegitimate sons right before he kicked the bucket in front of his own children and grandchildren i love the phrase kick the bucket i don't know why it's probably really morbid the crazy thing was that none of his children knew this life of his not even my great aunt knew about it because she would have made a huge fuss if she was alive at the time what was crazier was that these two sons had already passed away five and seven years ago he was 98 years old at the time and his invisible sons were 65 and 69 years old the children found out that one of his invisible sons was actually a teacher at a school that his granddaughters attended when they were in high school holy shit nevertheless his children decided to reach out to the children of the invisible sons okay so cousins right they got connected and learned so much stuff about my grand uncle the craziest thing is i actually dated one of the granddaughters of one of the invisible sons the one who passed away at age 69 you dated your first cousin thrice removed that's correct right holy shit that's mad that is Oh my god, I want to know how this person feels about sleeping with a family member. I mean, I know it's thrice removed, like it's a very distant family member, but not stupidly, not stupidly distant. The last few things my grandfather told me was that when he was a kid, he and his mother would throw big stones on cars from a bridge. And he also told me about how much better looking the lady that delivered the bread to his family was compared to my grandma. What kind of confession is that? I wonder how many people have confessed to cheating to like think they're gonna go to heaven if they're really religious and they think, oh, I just need to confess my sins. When I was in hospital, the guy in the bed next to me just asked to stop taking his medication as he was ready to die. Oh, the last thing I heard him say was, there's no one waiting for me at home, so I'm going where they are. <laughs> that is so sad. That is so sad. But I'm happy that he can be reunited with his family. Why did we have to end on such a sad one? Oh, that's made me sad. I'm sorry if it's made you sad. I'm really sorry. I take it back. I take back reading that confession. Well, my emotional support dog hasn't been very emotionally supportive today. Have you? She's actually dead to the world. That wasn't supposed to be a pun, by the way. So, Groovy Girls, thank you for joining me for this video. If you know of any deathbed confessions, please leave them down below. Or if you do want to do it anonymously, then you can go down to the link in my description and confess it to the People's Diary. It is all anonymous. I will never, ever, ever find out who submits those answers. If you're comfortable with that. Hi. So modest. Aside from that, I love you all so, so much and I will see you in the next video, Groovy Girls. Bye.